Hi guys, it's me, and today I'm discussing the long-awaited Dream Thieves by Maggie Stevader. I'm just gonna say right up front that even when I'm summarizing this, since it's a sequel, there will be slight spoilers. Spoilers in some forms. If you have not read Raven Boys, I would just go now. And I will notify those who have not yet read Dream Thieves when to leave. So, go get Raven Boys and read it, and then you can come on back. After you read Dream Thieves. Granted. <laughs> Dream Thieves is the sequel to Maggie Stevator's The Raven Boys, which I got the first date came out last year and read that and just totally adored it. And I've been waiting for Dream Thieves for quite some time, but busy as always, I finished it about last week. And so now, even though it came out in September, now I'm doing my review. <laughs> it's very complex, so I'm just going to read from the blurb to give you guys a little summary of what's going down in Dream Thieves if you've read Raven Boys. Um, Ronan Lynch has secrets. Some he keeps from others, some he keeps from himself. One secret, Ronan can bring things out of his dreams. And sometimes he's not the only one who wants those things. Ronan is one of the Raven Boys, a group of friends, pr practically brothers, searching for a dead king named Glendower, who they think is hidden somewhere in the hills by their elite private school, Agalin B. Don't know how to pronounce that. Academy. The path to Glendower has long lived as an undercurrent beneath town, but now, like Ronan's secrets, it is beginning to rise to the surface, changing everything in its wake. The Raven Boys, you have Ronan, you have Adam, you have Noah, and you have Gansey, and then we of course have Blue, who's a, become a good friend of them. I'm going to start out with what I enjoyed and what I think worked really well. What worked so, so well were, were the complex, fully realized well-constructed characters. They were all very, very unique, and I use this term a lot, but they were very real. They all had very distinct voices, at, to the point of if, if you took things they said, <laughs> whoops, if you took things that they specifically said, but you took out the taglines, like said blue, I'm pretty sure that I could identify who said what, just from what they said and how they said it. That's how distinct and fully realized these character are, and characters are. And their struggles, their internal struggles and the struggles around them really hit home. They're, they feel like something that a, a teenager would really be struggling with and I could relate to a lot of it. So I really want to commend Maggie Stevader for the, realis the a level of realism in which she portrayed these, these characters. Her writing, her prose is gorgeous and lyrical. She describes everything and everything in a very unique way. Uh, she never describes anything in a really stereotypical, she doesn't use stereotypical metaphors she and stereotypical similes and everything. Everything is distinctly her and you never would have things she compares things to like you never would have thought of that and but it makes so much sense she uses di a variety of sentence structure to convey the way things are feeling like when someone is just having this odd state of confusion she blends really short stochotic sentences with really elongated sentences that drag it's just everything her sentence structure really conveys what the character is truly feeling in that moment this book really digs around more in the dark. It's, I mean, um, it's a lot of it's really morbid. It talks about death a lot and what is the point of reality and loss and how a child deals with abuse that they've had in their past or the absence of parents. It's, I mean, it's like big questions like how do you how do you create a uh, life yourself which we see through um adam who really struggles with this idea of how to make something for himself without succumbing to others needs or others things and then there we have ronan like what is actually real since he is pulling all these things from his dream and throughout dreams and throughout the novel he's seeing that his dad pulls things from his dreams and then there's this random creepy dude named kavinsky who does this and he's realizing that the spoiler they can actually pull people out of dreams 
and he just starts to really think about what is real. And that can be just a, a thing that you, someone could ponder in life who doesn't take things out of their dreams. It's what is reality and what is something that you created in your mind. A few things that didn't work well, in my opinion, I thought the ending was a little rushed. Like, we have this big build-up. All these things are happening. All these characters are coming in. All these plot points are coming together. And then it just kind of, it's kind of like, okay, we gotta wrap this up. Like, here we go. And, which was odd for her. I mean, it was still writing really well. It was just, felt like she just kind of rushed. Like, she was trying to finish it. And then a few times, the pace just kind of dragged and it was... To the point of I'm not quite sure why it's getting so slow right here. And I was like, okay, come on. Come on. Overall, I'm going to give the Dream Thieves... Five out of five stars! Yeah! I know there were a few things that I thought didn't particularly work extremely well. But honestly, the caliber that she is at... the the masterful world building and storytelling and the gorgeous prose and the character development, it deserves a five. It deserves all the fives and all the claps. Just bowing down to her. If you have not read The Dream Thieves, I already had a spoiler a few minutes back, but um, now I'm going to talk about big surprises and things that kind of shocked me and were like, Whoa! And just uh, my general opinion and thoughts on characters. So if you have not read Dream Thieves, get on it. I It's such, such a quality sequel. It's incredible. Get on it. Go read it. Goodbye. But if you have read it, now is the time that we shall discuss this. First of all, okay, what do you think, this is just a question, what do you think is Glendower really? Like, the ending, what? He has Mora. Like, Mora is under the ground with Glendower? Like, what is going on? I mean, I just, is Glendower maybe actually alive? Is Glendower maybe like Noah and it's like a ghost that fades on the ley lines? I mean, like, and takes people? I mean, what's really going on? Maybe, 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 crackpot theory, guys. Okay, maybe Glendower is some kind of spirit that maybe Glendower is the ley line and he feeds off people's energy and he actually takes people like Mora. Maybe. What do you guys think about that? comments or no those are really spoilery message me let's chat about this a few other things can gamzy and blue please happen like do you guys want that i definitely want that i mean her and adam it just it doesn't work and you can tell that she's trying to get herself to like adam because of the whole curse thing and when she's with gamzy it's just perfect it just oh my goodness it's just it's so perfect. I, I just love it so much. And I, but I really, I just, I loved Gansey in this novel. He, he's really personable. It's that whole thing where it's like people who have wealth and stuff can, can still have problems, you know? It's like Adam we see is the one with the most problems, of course, because, you know, he's had the abusive father. He's had a horrible life, but Gansey has problems too. I mean, everyone expects him to be so perfect, but it, I mean, it weighs on him. And, but he pushes it on himself, too. That's a total side note. Okay, did you guys call the whole Kavinsky takes things out of his dreams, too? Because, being a Grey Warren, because I definitely, definitely called that. When they were exchanging the whole wristband thing, and he's like, here you go, bro. Ronan's like, thanks. And then he's like, let me go make something for him. I was like, yep, mm. Kavinsky's a weird guy. I really do not know what to make of him. He just... I kind of liked Kavinsky and Ronan hanging out together, though, because it's just, they're so, they're such bizarre people. I just don't under, what? <laughs> oh, another plot point. So, Mora has a new lover on the scene, the Gray Man. Another weird, but totally fascinating character. Do you guys like that? I don't, I don't really know what to make of it at this point in time. You're gonna have to come back to me on that one. I'm not quite sure. It's just about... Everything that just like shocked me or just was weird or anything, uh, just Gansy and Blue, please get together. You're so perfect. Please, Maggie Steven, or put them together somehow, some way in the next book. Just guys, I can't wait for the next book. So I just this is such a unique 
series. Like I'm not I'm not reading anything like this right now, and it's definitely a favorite. Um, I was going to say something else. Until next time, guys, keep on reading. Bye!